people have written us letters and said that this is all you know, nice what you said because in fact it's obvious that it's exciting in the classroom when it happens. And they know that. But you can't say what's going to happen. Or you can't guarantee that at the end of the unit or the semester or whatever it is that uh, the student is going to know this, this, and this. And I say, you know, absolutely right. You know, we can't. Uh, it, it, you just don't know. It depends a whole lot on, on the input of the kid, on the student, and you can't predict human beings like that. And if you think about that for a second, that makes teaching a hell of a lot more exciting than, than uh, it ever could have been before. Well, the teacher answer? It's 42. The teacher has the answer. He usually has it. I have my wallet. I open up my wallet. And it's the same as my social security number, 4304. And they all write that down, and then in the exam I ask them, what was the weight of the beam? <laughs> they don't get right. Did you ever see a man walk through the city streets in New York City? I mean, I got to a point in New York where I could do that all the time. I've been thinking. You kind of walk up to one lane of cars, and you wiggle your, your bottom a little bit, and this car slips past here, and, and you don't even look, and other cars coming down. And, you know, every kid in New York can do that. The littler, the, the better. And yet, you know, we say he doesn't know about velocity. We teach him formulas about velocity and acceleration. He knows that stuff. He knows it since he was, you know, six years old. He knows what happens. He knows what it really is. My feeling is, let's first start perceiving that for a change. And we'll realize that you don't have to start from, quote, scratch, which is what so many teachers say. That, in fact, you know, we're the ones that started from scratch. Because we don't know what those kids are thinking most of the time. From my point of view, the perfection would be for a teacher to, to be able to put his himself inside of the head of the kid that is constantly thrilled by patterns, combinations, things that are, are what I call paramathematical things, uh, things that are really mathematics. And I think the reason why the gains, besides making the environment pictorially colorful and physically manipulative and interesting, and when you come in that room, we want to have a room where you, you pick up something and you, you, you want to play with it. It's a playful thing. Is everybody ready for me to start? You have your geo board sort of cleared here. Yeah. How many of you have geo boards at your school? I we do. You do. You don't, Colin. Now I have the geo boards and I used them last year, but I didn't use nearly as many things as I realize now I could have used. And and what we wanted was to explore the idea of what actually could be done with these boards. If I were in my own classroom, the first thing I would do would be say, uh, what do you think I mean when I ask you for the area of something? Now, I did this, and the answers I got were just unbelievable. Uh, one young man said, well, you'd, uh, you'd want me to multiply L times W times H. I had the same question this morning. Another young lady said, uh, Oh, no, she wants you to multiply 2 times pi times r. And I never did get a single formula for area. So I would start and say, what is area, and try to get some of these conceptions out of the way that they have. And then I would arrive at the idea that I wanted to define this inside of this little rubber band to be a one square unit of area. I, I would say, now look, we're just going to call that one unit of area. And we mean that in there, on top of that. And if I call that one unit of area, what do you suppose this would be? Over here. Or I could let that go. I mean, what would you be willing to call that? And, and oh, they definitely want to call it a hack. There's no problem there. And I don't mention the formula for a triangle areas height, the base times altitude. I, I don't even talk about that. But this is it's just the plain old proof that's done by Pythagoras that's been modernized and put in all the geometry books. And it requires, if it's done carefully, some 67 to 87 steps. You know, if you do it uh, <laughs> in the manner in which most geometry books present it. But I think that you'll find that you can just transpose that figure to this and, and then put in your triangles, which they put in, and that it will come out very nice and very fast. Uh, if you want to prove it. So that's this year. I did year before last. 
I was wondering, I was wondering if I could combine your area idea with the Okay, you're going to have some kids in your class. Maybe some of them are not going to be doing so well. And you might start questioning these kids. You know, you know, you, know, you might start trying to get next to them, find out, you know, what is your problem? And you know what's going to be the worst thing? He's going to tell you what his problem is. And then well, how are you going to feel? What are you going to do? Are you going to try to help him with this problem? Is it going to take you off that campus? Whether it has something to do with school or whether you do it on your own personal time. If, you know, if you're any kind of a humanitarian, you know, are you going to try to help this kid outside of school if the administrators say, no, you know, you can't do this? I mean, are you really, how much, how much are you going to get involved? And that's what's happened to us. Not all the workshop was limited to the campus. In one case, social science teachers developing a unit on community visited an educational development center in the Roxbury ghetto. Well, is part of your long run aim to uh, create a sense of community within the city? Our or long range goal like was to make education better for everybody, for, well, for all schools and school children within the city of Boston. But then, in order to do that, we had to set up intermediate goals. You do something here, and you find out you've got to see someone here. Then I came back and I said, you know, I want to know what you mean by the community. And not a damn soul could tell me. What if, um, God forbid, something happened, and you left this program? Or maybe, what if the program wasn't funded anymore? <coughs> Well, I think if we believe, and, and I do believe that most of us sincerely believe in what we are doing and, and, and the policy results of what will come from what we are doing, that we will carry uh, these things with us wherever we go. I mean, as a personal person, wherever I teach, uh, I will carry these same ideas and I, I will do my best to teach in the same kind of way and to help young people. And I think those of us who are in the program have a certain kind of concern and a certain kind of care for people themselves.